from Warrington, Virginia, WHCS Channel 29 presents the state semifinal Division VI playoff game, Group AAA High School Football, between the defending state champion Hampton Crabbers and the Fauquier Falcons. Hi, I'm Tim Cole, along with Bob Hintz. We are here at cold and windy Falcon Field in Warrington, Virginia, and we're glad you can join us this afternoon, or this evening as the case may be, for the semifinal game between the defending state champion Hampton Crabbers and the Falcons. Bob, uh, we've been uh, here for a while. We've been talking about these two teams. Let's give the fans a little insight about the Falcons. Okay, Tim, first of all, I'd like to uh, so tell the fans that this stadium is a, a smaller stadium. They had to bring in some uh, stands to uh, accommodate the Hampton Crabbers and the uh, local crowd. Uh, it's supposed to be sunny today, but the cloud cover is over. It is windy and the cold. The wind is going to be basically going across field, and sometimes it'll be going from the left to the right. The Hampton Crabbers are coming in with a lot of confidence. They played real good last week. But I, you see the, the Hampton Crabbers on your right, screen. Right, they're, they're huddling over there with Coach right now. They're introducing the uh, the Falkir uh, Falcons team. Tim, uh, kind of an ironic thing. The only team that be, was uh, that beat uh, Cortland is the uh, Falcons, and the only team to beat the Phoebus Phantoms on the field is Hampton. And their two teams are both playing down in uh, Newport News today, which the fans will be able to see that game. Tuesday, Thursday nights at 9 p.m. and uh, Friday morning 9 a.m. And of course this game will be airing Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. right here on Channel 29 and again 9 a.m. Thursday morning in the semifinal game. The winner goes on to face either Highland Springs or T.C. Williams. The loser gets to watch the same game. Four times in a row the Hampton Crabbers have gotten to this point. They are the two-time defending state champions, of course. They are 11-1. Their only blemish, a 16-0 loss at the hands of the Bethel Bruins in the final regular season game of the season. For the Falcons, they are 10-2. They have won five games in a row. The last two playoff games, they've won handily, and they are a big team. Anyone coming over here from Hampton thinking that the Falcons are going to be a small team have got some big surprises. they got some boys 270, 280, 300. Nine. They've got some big players on this team, and they will be a larger team than the Hampton Crabbers. The uh, the Falcons lost two games by a total of six points. They lost to Woodbridge during the regular season, 13 to 10, and beat that same Woodbridge team here last week, 28 to nothing. They also lost to a Stafford team. 14 to 11 during the regular season. As I said, they're on a roll. They've won five games in a row, and the Hampton Crabbers, of course, they are winners in their last three. And uh, or is that two? Excuse last me. two. Ten. Last two games, and they had, of course, won uh, 13 or 14 games prior to that loss to Bethel. A lot of people were speculating that Hampton might have problems rebounding from that loss to Bethel, but I think what happened, as we've documented fairly well, that the, the Crabbers had clinched the playoffs. They were simply not up for that game, but we're going to watch a, a different game this afternoon for the Hampton Crabbers, I'm sure. Oh, Tim, the Hampton is going to see something they haven't seen all year, and that's an unbalanced line. The uh, Falcons will come out unbalanced, always to the right. They'll most of the time will be in a, a straight T backfield, although they will show a whole lot of different looks in the backfield and do a lot of motion. They do a lot of trick plays, but uh, the Hampton Crabbers have a tremendous coaching staff and I know they are prepared, Tim, and I uh, see that the uh, officials are getting ready to take the, the captains out on the, the field. I'll, right. I'll let you get the captains and I'll uh, come out with the officials. All right, the Crabbers represented by Weymouth Williams, number 60, and Sherwood Jones, number 70. The co-captains for the Falcons, Mike Bolt, number 62, and number 38, Carlton Raymond, who just also happens to be the leading rusher for the Falcons. Uh, while we have this chance, let's run down the names of the officials. Then we'll get to the starting offensive and defensive lineups for both teams. Tim, you can see the officials are meeting with the, uh, the respective co-captains right now, officiating today's game. And I'm not sure where this crew is from. It's from the northern part, but they're, they're being introduced. Uh, the referee is Art Giles. Uh, the umpire is Chuck Nor Norberg. There you can see him on the screens. The linesman is Ed Snyder. The line judge is Vic Leert, Lint, I'm sorry, and the back judge is Bob Shindon or okay. something like that, whatever. Something close enough. All right, <laughs> let's run down the starting offensive and defensive lineups for both of these teams while we have the opportunity, as they are still having the introduction of the officials and the toss of the coin at the center of the field. We'll keep an eye on that as long as we can, and we'll run down the offensive lineups for you. First of all, 
for the Hampton Crabbers. On offense, at center will be Williams. The guards will be Jones and Mabry. The tackles, Mason and Riddick. The ends, Cofield and Wilson. The running back, excuse me, the quarterback is Eric Hunter. The running backs, Dwayne Murphy and Mike Stefanko. And Tony Hyman will be the flanker. On the uh, defense for the Hampton Crabbers, at the guard positions is Williams and Lawrence. At the tackles, Mason and Wilson. At the ends, Owens and Davis. Linebacking for the Crabbers, Jones and Carlos. The cornerbacks, uh, Ike Billups and Hyman. The safety is uh, McLean, and the kicker punter is our good friend, Mr. Mike okay, Husted. Yeah. All right, for the Falcons of Falconer yeah. High School, and we've got Hampton the has Hampton has won the toss, have deferred the toss, and the, they will, in fact, kick to start the ball game. For the Falcons on offense, the center is Cox. Kellen and Wachowitz are the guards. The tackles, Malloy and Crocker. The ends are Taylor and Sade. The running backs, Raymond, Robinson, and Fodrell. Zop is the quarterback, and the kicker is Sneed. And on defense for the uh, Falcons, uh, the tackle positions, and they're playing basically a 4-4 lineup with Meter and Logan. At the ends, Thomas and Ham. At the linebackers, Bolt, Smith, and Bunn. At defensive backs, Robinson and Zop. The strong safety is Raymond, and the free safety is Rogers. The coaching staff for the Hampton Crabbers, 17-year veteran Mike Smith. He's assisted by Alvis Mann, Danny Mitchell, Walter Brower, and Steve Washington. And coaching for the uh, Falcons, head coach Don Chamara, assisted by Charlie Pierce, Mike Potts, Granville Zopp, Tom Furnell, Roger Pierce, Bruce McDaniels, and John Forsard. They have quite a coaching staff. Carlton Raymond standing back inside of his own five will be the deep man for the Falcons. We're just about set to go. And uh, Bob, I don't know about you, but I, this game is really looming to be exciting to me. This Falcon team is someone that is going to have to be contended with. The Crabbers may not have met as strong a team as this all year. Well, so. I, I don't know if, how strength they are, but they are a big team, Tim, as you alluded to earlier. Big team, and they have not lost this year at this stadium. They're 8 and 0. Oh. How a, a team gets to have eight home games here is beyond me, but that's the way it goes. And we're set to go. Mike Houston has it in the air, and it's a long kick all the way back to the goal line. It's fumbled at the one yard line. Now it's finally picked up. That's Bart Zopp, the quarterback. He's got a, a fancy play. He throws it across the field. And he'll get out close to the 16 or 17 yard line. So we were told to look for some trick plays. And he on the, the opening kickoff, look what happens. Tim, that, this is something that they would, uh, would coaching staff was aware of right from the beginning that they do some fancy things out there. And I noticed that one of their coaches, and maybe we'll see him on the sideline, but it is cold and windy and he's in a t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> Hey, you got to be a little bit crazy, Tim. They've marked the ball just across the 15-yard line for the opening play. The Falcons will have Bart Zopp at quarterback. Fadrell and Carlton Raymond, the running backs. Raymond is the lone setback. He gets the handoff into the middle of the Hampton line for a couple of yards. To meet him, amongst others, was 65, Muhammad Carlos of the Hampton Crabbers. Well, Tim, they were, they're basically a running team. They passed early in the season, the first three or four games. They did some passing, but they have not passed hardly at all uh, the latter part of the season. They're basically a running team. And you have some statistics from last week's game that they well, they'll run all right. They, yards, I believe, on the ground. 298 yards against a strong Woodbridge team. So, yes, they can run the football, and they can pass as well. I'll get to that in a moment. Zop, as I said, at quarterback. The deep back is Fadrell. Fadrell has some running room. He's dragged down, but not before he gets to the 30-yard line. And that'll be a first down for the Falcons. Tim, they did a trap up the center that time, and that's what they do. They are basically a trapping team. They'll run uh, up the middle and off tackles, and they will trap the guards. And that was a good trapping play that time because it did pick up a first down. Zop, the quarterback, is a junior. He did complete 53 out of 119 attempts for almost 750 yards this season. He had six interceptions if he has a weak spot and two touchdown passes. First down for the Falcons at the Hampton, excuse me, the Falcon 30-yard line. Zop pitches out to Raymond. Raymond trying to get around Jones. He does. He loses one tackler and finally taken down by 
Hyman, but not before he gets across the 40-yard line. So consecutive first downs for the Falcons. But they will run that pitch, Tim, and that's a pitch to the weak side where they have a strong side. They got an unbalanced to the right, and they'll pitch that ball to go to the left. And a Hampton Crabber, I didn't catch the number, made contact in the backfield and well, did not Sherwood make the Jones. tackle. Sherwood Jones, who will not miss many tackles, did in fact have a hand on him, but he got away from Sherwood and did pick up the first down at the 42-yard line. So the Falcons on the initial possession have the, the ball at the 42. First down. This goes inside for Raymond. Raymond gets up to about the 44, a pickup of a couple of tough yards. Raymond has had an excellent season for the Falcons. He has uh, almost 1,000 yards on the season, almost 998 yards, and carried the ball 140 times during the regular season. Pick up of about, well, let's call it three. The ball is marked at the 44. Actually, I guess it's a, it's a long two he picked up on that. Well, this is a good test for the Hampton Crabbers. They have not run into anybody that is a basic running team and that is as big as this team, Tim. Vidrell with the ball, tackled by three or four Crabbers. The initial tackle taken by Andre Davis, number 32 for the Crabbers. Also getting up off of that pile is James Wilson, number 88, who had a, a real good game last game out for the Crabbers. This the is Crabbers. a test for them, Tim. They, this is the first time they've had a third and long. It looks like a third and five, and uh, they made good yardage on that quick pitch, so I see the coaching staff just sent in a uh, player with the, with the play. It is, in fact, third and five for the Falcons. First time that they have faced a third down situation now. Three backs in the backfield. This is Raymond, and he is going to come up short of the first down. The Hampton defense was there. It looked like a little early motion in the backfield. It looked like one of the setbacks might have left a half a count early, but no flag forth. There was, yeah, there was no flag, but there was definite movement in the backfield that time. That was a kind of a counter play or a cross buck that time, Tim, and it was a little slow developing. And you and I know that this Hampton Crabbers team does a good job of pursuing. They're, they're quick defensively, and uh, they will uh, they'll make your will burn you if, you if you take too long in the backfield. Sneed at the 35. This team full of tricks, so the Crabbers will take nothing for granted. They've got one deep man, Stefanko. The ball kicked away from him. It takes a good Falcon roll all the way down to the Hampton 16-yard line, so that's where the Crabbers will start their first possession. The Falcons had two first downs and then bogged down on a third and five on good defensive play by the Hampton Crabbers. We are, again, in the first quarter, 7.58 remaining, and we have no score from Warrington, Virginia. Tim Cole with Bob Hintz, and uh, we won't have our roving reporter, A.G. Womble, on hand today. As many of you will know, he is at uh, Todd Stadium for the game the Phantoms of Phoebus are involved in, and his color man, Coach Kozlowski of the Bethel Bruins. Hampton Crabbers from the 16. This is Stefanko, right up the middle, across the 20 to about the 21. Well, up Hampton will, five. Excuse me, Tim. Hampton will do the basic thing, as you and I have seen them play all year long, that they will not vary too much from what they have been very successful with, and that is handing the ball up the center and uh, off tackles, and they do an excellent job of blocking at the line of scrimmage. Hampton Travers, a 30-to-nothing victor last week. But I think the Falcons will be a true test for the Travers. Hunter wants to pass, has a man downfield, is thrown over the head of the intended receiver, Grady McLean, number 22. McLean comes into the ball game with 15 catches on the season for 281 yards. He is the leading receiver for the Crabbers. Of course, as you mentioned, Bob, the Crabbers not known as a passing team. They will run more often than they'll pass, certainly. Well, Tim, I'll tell you one thing that that, that pass did and that will definitely loosen that defense up a little bit. When you throw the ball, the man was open. He just overthrew him. Third down now for the Crabbers. Third down and about six. Inside handoff goes to Todd Summers. Summers has the first down. He's across the 30 to about the 31, 32 yard line. So Todd Summers, who had an excellent ball game for the Crabbers in the later part of the season, uh, picks up the first down for the Crabbers. 
Well, that's confidence in your running attack, Tim, that uh, you have a second and, and five, and you throw a pass to come back and run a, a uh, off tackle to the left and pick up the necessary yardage. First down for the Crabbers. Second man through is Stefanko. Stefanko gets nothing. In on the stop for the Falcons, number 62, Mike Bolt. You know, they have some outstanding defensive players. Yes, it's Craig do. Thomas who uh, plays defense for the uh, the Falcons. Uh, Thomas is 81, and he has had eight and a half sacks of the quarterback in the last two games. That's a good career for a lot of defensive players. Well, oh, isn't that the truth? And he's had eight and a half sacks in two games alone. So uh, he's the number we'll be keeping an eye on this afternoon for sure. Number 81, the right end on defense for the Falcons. No gain for Stefanko. Stefanko again gets the call. And he'll pick up a yard or two. Tim, I believe that was Summers. That's not Stefanko. I'm sorry, you're right. You're right, it is. In fact, Summers. And we have had trouble with that all year long because they all are about the same size. Well, they're similar in stature, certainly. And uh, as we've mentioned before, Summers is number 42. He's checking out of the ball game now. In, in his place comes Mike Stefanko. Stefanko, with over 1,000 yards on the regular season, was second in the Peninsula District overall in rushing and scoring behind David Brown of the Phoebus Phantoms. Hunter wants to pass, has some time now, rolls, looks, pumps, and gets away from one tackler, but doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll be sacked for a five-yard loss. The man grabbing him was William Ham, number 64, for the Falcons, 6'1", 250, and he showed that for a big man, he's got good speed. Sure does, Tim, and this puts uh, uh, the, the pressure on Mike Houston, the putter, but it also will uh, should give the Falcons great field position. They've got three men back. The breeze has subsided somewhat. Houston gets a good end-over-end -end kick, fielded and fumbled, and then taken immediately at the 38-yard line. The man fielding the ball was number 30, Dwight Robinson, one of the running backs. He had a little difficulty with the ball, but was able to recover his own fumble. That's one thing the Falcons have not done during the playoffs, and that is turn the ball over. They have had no turnovers in the two playoff games, while their opponents have had several. Last week, there were four fumbles by Woodbridge, two of which were recovered by the Falcons. Tim, we have a flag on the play, and I think the preliminary signal is holding against the Hampton Crabbers. If that's the case, then that'll move them back and make them punt that ball again. Well, they, uh, you know, it's not a bad point to make that they might, in fact, take the ball where it is. They would have to handle the ball again, and there's no question that, uh, that the 38-yard line to start the possession is not a bad place for the Falcons to be, but, you know, 15 yards is 15 yards, too. So the line of scrimmage being the 26 would actually put the Crabbers on the 13. A lengthy discussion with the co-captain on the field for the Falcons. That's Carlton Raymond, who's talking it over with the referee. It's a personal foul against the Crabbers, declined by the Falcons. And they I want don't the think, football. Excuse me, Tim, but I was watching the coaching staff down here on the sideline, and they they were wanting them to take that uh, take that penalty, make the Crabbers kick again. Well, apparently a miscommunication if, in fact, that's the case because the co-captain, Raymond, has, in fact, elected to refuse the penalty for the Falcons. Five, excuse me, 4.55, our time remaining in the first quarter. We have no score. The Falcons 10-2, and two, the Crabbers 11-1. The winner advances to the state finals. The Crabbers have been there the last two years and won it. They've been involved in the semifinals the last four years, winning it three out of the last four. Zop at quarterback for the Falcons, starting from the 37. Inside, trying to cut outside now. And that is Carlton Raymond. He is snowed under. Good defensive effort by the Crabbers. And of course, Tim. defense is their middle name. They rank number one in the state in defense. Well, they most certainly do. Tim, that hole was completely blocked up, and he tried to get off to the side. And when he did, he just ran into a host of the Crabbers. Uh, you'll notice that when they, if the fans will notice when the Falcons come up to the line of scrimmage, they have a back, uh, a blocking back that is just about a yard to a three quarters of a yard from the line of scrimmage. And sometimes what they'll do is hand it off. He's right there next to the quarterback. In fact, they got two of them up there now. And you have to watch them because they will try the quick opener on plays like that. Pitch out. And now they're going to try a little flea flicker. The, the flip goes back to Zop. His receivers are covered. He's looking for someone to throw to, and he's going to be snowed under 
back at the 35-yard line. So the Crabber secondary, which uh, the paper, the Daily Press, this week alluded to being airtight is just that. They do the job. Hyman back there along with Brady McLean. And uh, among others, we got number nine back there, Eric Hunter, the quarterback for the Crabbers. So the, the Crabber defense on secondary coverage is just superb. And then when you've got good rushing linemen like the Crabbers do, you've got a real good defense. There's no question about that. Tim, they only sent one, one receiver at that time, number 11. Scott Taylor was the only man that went downfield, and there was three defensive backs that had him covered like a blanket. Third down and about 11 for the Falcons. Back at their 35. The fake, Zop keeps and goes in across the middle. He's got some running room. He's got the first down and then plenty more. He's all the way down to the Crabber 40, check that 38 yard line. So Zop on a quarterback option, snuck inside and got big yardage. Zop last week against the Woodbridge team had good, good yardage, had uh, 34 yards, check the 27 yards rushing. And he's not particularly a rushing quarterback per se. There you see a good shot of Bart Zop. Well, Tim, they were trying uh, as the Hampton was going for the fake on the first man, and, and they hit the, the fake man and let the quarterback just slip onto the outside. And again, uh, the weather is cold up here, but the tackling on the Crabbers, there was two or three guys that had him and had a shot at him, and he, and he got through. Got through. Ball marked at the Hampton 38-yard line. Double blocking backs for the Falcons. Up again, same play. It's fumble this time. It's loose, and the Crabbers have got it. Andre Davis falls on the football for the Crabbers. So Zop had the, uh, the turn the play inside and it looked like he might have one or two yards at best. Someone punched that football out from underneath his grasp and Andre Davis alertly pounced on it for the Crabbers. Well, Tim, we've come into this thing and you had said earlier that they had not turned the ball over, but they had fought, fought a, a, a defensive team like the Hampton Crabbers because these people scribble, scratch and, and claw and they just beat you to death out there. So the Crabbers on the turnover, take over at their 39-yard line. Mike Stefanko, left side, across the 40 to about the 43. Pickup of almost four for Mike Stefanko, who averages more than five yards every time he touches the football. And Tim, they're, they're small running backs, and of course, on occasion, they'll stop them for a loss or right at the line of scrimmage. But we have found out all year long that you may stop them once or twice, but you're not gonna stop those running backs all game long. Well, as the Crabbers so obviously did last week in that 30 to nothing victory, they just keep coming at you and they keep coming at you until finally they break you open. Pick up of about four and a half. This is Summers right up across midfield down to the 42 yard line of the Falcons. So Summers breaks a big gainer and the Crabbers are in business once again. Tim, if he could have cut that to the outside just a little sooner, he may have gone all the way because we have seen him this year put on some moves that will flat make a guy lose both of his shoes. Oh, we saw that the game against uh, Kikatan when he won the game for them, and I'll say that as a team, of course, they played superbly, but on his 31-yard scamper, we saw probably the finest run I've seen all year in probably the finest game I've seen in a long time. That was the Hampton 13-7 victory over the Kikatan Warriors. First down for the Crabbers. At the 43, Hunter has some time, now scrambles, throws downfield. He's got one man open, he's got it inside the 20, the six yard line. Throw, catch, Tim. That was an excellent, he was double covered, and Hunter threw that ball on the run and got that right in the, right in the, was that Brady McLean? Brady McLean, the oh, ball excellent. catcher, the leading receiver for the Crabbers. What a super catch inside the 10 at the five. So the Crabbers, who do not rely on the pass as their main arsenal, this time come up with a big play as the line of scrimmage was the 42. And they brought it all the way down inside of the five. First and goal for the Crabbers. Summers and that's Summers with the ball. And a big stack up down close to the goal line. I don't believe he got in. I don't think he even got more than maybe a yard and a half at the Tim, most. Tim, it looks like they're going to spot it at about the two or three. Uh, it's hard to see from our vantage point here exactly where the ball is. But it looks like it's on about the two-yard line, Tim. So the Crabbers second down and goal at the two, trying to take advantage of the first turnover of the ball game and the first turnover in the playoffs for the Falcons as it's second down and goal at the two. 
Line up in the eye. Second man through, Stefanko, touchdown! Yeah, he got it, Tim, he followed those blockers, and that's one thing you have to say about the Hampton running backs, is they will follow the blockers of that lines, and they they get a lot of headlines, but they'll be the first ones to tell you that their success is due to the offensive line of the Crabbers. Just one second remains here in the first quarter. The Crabbers have gotten on the board first. After the fumble recovery by Andre Davis, they've taken the ball from their 38-yard line on a 62-yard drive capped by a two-yard plunge off the right side by Mike Stefanko. Houston has it up, and it's good. So Houston now connects on his 27th PAT of the season. A 62-yard drive after the fumble recovery, and Bob, how many times over the last several years have we seen this very thing happen? The Crabber defense sets up the offense. Well, they do that, and I tell you, that's one thing that about this Hampton Crabber coaching staff is they will tell you right away that this Hampton Crabber defense have won a lot of games for them, not because they put points on the board, but because they have caused some turnovers, Tim. But I want to tell you, I, I was so impressed with Hunter on that throw because he was kind of flushed out of the pocket roll to his right and hit uh, Grady McLean between two, de uh, two de uh, uh, defenders. Absolutely, a perfect throw. So the Crabbers, with a second remaining in the first quarter, have drawn first blood of the four games that these two teams have been involved in. The first team to score has gone on to victory. I, I, just, I have to check myself on that. I think Kickatan scored first against Hampton, actually. Yes, they have. Both times that Kickatan played them, they scored first. Houston has it teed up. He, he kicks a floater down around the eight yard line. Uh, good run back by the Falcons all the way out close to the 40 yard line. So the Crabbers looked a little slow to get downfield. That was a case where I think the, the kick was so low and got there so quickly that the pursuit of the kicking team didn't get downfield quick enough. Yeah, normally uh, Mike Houston kicks the ball with a little more height on it, Tim, which gives your kicking team a chance to get down and, and uh, recover. Uh, they did a good job, they being the Falcons, did a good job running that ball back. And uh, that's the end of the quarter as we see what's happening on there. They're going to change ends here. So the ball will be marked at the 39, a 31-yard return on the kick. As that low kick was much to the advantage of the Falcons. The Hampton Crabbers, after one quarter, lead the Fuck Your Falcons 7 to nothing in the state semifinals of the Division 6 Group AAA. <laughs> we got enough of these titles. Say it, say it. <laughs> there you see it, the Crabbers and the Falcons. By the way, well, I want to give a lot of thanks to the people here at Falcon Stadium for all their help. But the most thanks has to go to our crew who came up here Friday afternoon. This is a chilly, chilly day out here in Warrington, Virginia. And the crew has been here since early this morning and once again have gotten the best possible vantage points for their cameras. The uh, the whole program is working super, and Scotty Bowers and his crew were our congratulations again to a great job on your part. And don't forget Dr. Sam. He's Dr. Sam is walking around here. We've got more clothes no, on. No, he's not walking. He's on one of the cameras today. <laughs> oh, he is? <laughs> yes, he is. All right, from the 39, the Falcons. Up the middle, maybe a yard. Carrying the ball was Corey Fodrell. He crosses the 40. About the 41. Pickup of almost two yards for the Falcons. Well, Tim, the, the success they've had so far has been uh, one, the, the wide pitch and the quarterback keepers. Of course, the second time they run that quarterback keeper, they fumble the ball. Uh, but they'll stick two run of two blocker backs right up there close. And that's what they do is which gives them extra, extra people. They got both on the same side of the quarterback this time on the left side. And this will be a pitch to this side, it looks like. No, he's going to pass the ball, Tim. Has plenty of time, gets the pass at the line of scrimmage, and boy, is that man stuck over there. Andre Davis doing the job he always does for the Crabbers. Dwight Robinson grabbed the pass, and he was hit immediately on a perfect defensive play by Andre Davis. Tim, this is the first time this year that the Crabbers have run into a left-handed quarterback, I believe. But he throws that ball right well, but uh, Hampton Crabber pass defense, as you have stated earlier, does rank in the top of the, in the state. And boy, they were right on top of him. They picked up maybe a half a yard on that play. 
Third down and about eight for the first down. No blocking back, Tim. Full house backfield. Second man through, and that is Carlton Raymond. Raymond will be well short of the first down as he got out close to the 44-yard line, but that's where it'll be marked for a fir fourth down and about five for the Falcons. So we'll look at, again, the punting team. If the Falcons have any weaknesses at all, and I say that because there really doesn't appear to be any, but their kicking game is probably the only part of their game that's been fairly inconsistent this year. Well, Tim, but you get to this point of the season and in the playoffs, you're not going to have too many uh, weaknesses. Sneed is the kicker. Standing back at his 35, gets a good kick, takes a Hampton roll as it comes back up the field, and it'll be downed at the 37, 38 yard line. Some confusion about whether or not the ball had been touched by one of the Falcons. Got to be very careful because once that ball is touched by the defensive team, or in this case, the Hampton Crabbers, that ball is live. It's a live ball, but no, it was one of the Falcons that, that grabbed the ball and threw it back to uh, Mike Stefanko. <laughs> And Mike says, hey, I don't want that ball. We got good field position. Leave it alone. 37-yard <laughs> line, the Crabbers will start this possession. 9.40 to go. The clock moving. The Crabbers on top, 7 to nothing. At Chili Falcon Field in Warrington, Virginia, Tim Cole with Bob Hintz. Inside, handoff. Mike Stefanko, big yardage across the midfield stripe down to the 45. Check well, Tim, that, he's at the 50. Excuse me, Tim. He could have picked up more yardage had he not run into one of the defensive players. But I tell you what, the line did an excellent job open up a hole that time. Nobody touched the bank until he already picked up 10 yards. So he picks up, as you said, 10 and then some. He's got the ball at the 49 of the Falcons. Stefanko, as we've alluded to on numerous occasions, not big as football players go as far as his physical stature concerned, but he makes up for all of that with his heart. Inside handoff, Wayne Murphy gets the first carry of the afternoon for him. Wayne Murphy, of course, you may recall, had three three-yard touchdowns last week in that 30 to nothing victory by the Crabbers. And the Crabbers don't go to him often, but they've had success when Murphy does handle the football. Well, he's had success where they've gone with Murphy, Summers, or Stefanko this year. Tim, all three of those are excellent runners, and, and each one of them will tell you that the other one is good. I mean, they, they don't blow their own horn. They get out there and talk about the other ball players, and that's one thing I like about the Hampton Crabbers. They're not a me team. They are a team consisted of team players. There's nobody out there that is uh, worried about his own game or his own statistics or anything like that. I see we have a timeout. Coach Smith is coming out to talk to his uh, to his players. There's now a good the shot. Sideline camera, Tim. There you see a good shot. The overcast skies are the only negative thing in our possible coverage this afternoon, maybe causing your picture to be a little less bright than we'd like. Uh, I'm not sure what it might take to have them turn on the stadium lights here, or maybe you could give a good word to the people at <laughs> halftime. It would uh, we'll see if we can get it improve. on, Tim. Well, you know, maybe, uh, maybe Scotty can somehow uh, throw his weight around. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scotty, oh. And are, Scotty and I are two of the... Uh, the two of us together make a real good team. I tell you what, uh, both of us you two guys go to Omar the tent maker to get your shirts. I know that. Scotty and I uh, are, are from the Hardy Eater School. Yeah. Looking around the stands here, this, you know, I, I was curious when I heard about the, the school and how small the stadium was here. I was kind of surprised because uh, we're in Division Six, which is large enrollment, but the stadium here doesn't conform to a school that has a, a fairly large enrollment. This is, only seats about 2,200 people on a regular basis. Hunter wants to pass, has time, got a man open at the 20, all the way down to the 15-yard line. And that's Corey Cofield for the Hampton Crabbers, number 87. Well, Tim, that coaching staff has found a weakness there somewhere in that defensive backfield because that man was wide open. He had nobody but one guy between him and the goal line, and of course he got caught from behind, but what an excellent pass that the Eric Hunter threw. Eric Hunter to Corey Cofield. The ball is at the 17-yard line of the Falcons. Cofield on the season, nine catches, 151 yards. He's got some big ones, and that one would certainly be right up there with one of his best. Travers again threatening, leading 7 to nothing. This is Mike Stefanko. Stefanko across the 15 to about the 14. I got real sad news for you, Bob. 
there's little white flakes floating around <laughs> in the sky. I saw those flakes, Tim, but I was ignoring them. Yep, but it that, does. Uh, it's that cold, folks. There's there is a, a little bit of white snow coming down. Of course, that's kind of redundant. Snow well, is you white. The yellow snow is what you have to watch out for. <laughs> They've marked it at the 14 of the Falcons. Eight, excuse me, 7.25 is our time remaining in the first half. The Crabbers on top by seven on the strength of Mike Stefanko's two-yard touchdown. Hunter again wants to pass, gets pressure now, steps up, and then he loses his footing. He really was ready to unload, but he lost his footing back at the 28-yard line, so he'll take the sack, and the Crabbers will have to reorganize, and they'll have a substantial loss on that play. Well, they, neither one of his uh, receivers was open, but I saw who he was going to. He had uh, Gary McLean he was looking for in the end zone. Of course, you get that ball close to Gary, and he's going to come up with it. So but that was loss. A, excuse me, Tim. That was a good defensive rush by the uh, Falcon uh, front line. Big loss, as you saw on your screen there. Third down now, and third and 19 for the Crabbers. So after that big grab by Cofield, the Crabbers take the sack. And they've got two wide receivers to the left at the top of the screen. Now Hunter looks in and sees something on the defense that he doesn't want to look at and calls a timeout quickly for the Crabbers. That is their second timeout. And that'll come at 627 of the first quarter. You know, just to kind of parallel these teams, Bob, they're very similar in their scoring abilities on the season. Crabbers had 21 and a half points per game uh, for the season, while the Falcons had 20 points per game. The, the difference, and again, the statistics are, are minimal in, in difference. The Crabbers, of course, allowing the least number of points in the state, 42 points for a 3.5 per game average, while the Falcons gave up a little more than seven points per game. But when you get down to those kind of figures, it really doesn't make that much difference. The, uh, the Falcons are a bigger team than the Crabbers, and uh, the only difference right now seems to be that one turnover, Andre Davis pouncing on a fumble after Zop, the quarterback for the Falcons, had mishandled the ball on the, on the quarterback option. And that's the only difference. The Crabbers took the ball, drove 62 yards on a two-yard plunge by Mike Stefanko. They lead seven to nothing. So this will be a big play for both Hampton and the uh, uh, Falcons because they're going to want to try to keep Hampton away from the uh, field goal range. Third and 19, Hunter. Is hit as he throws, and it's intercepted at the five-yard line. So the intended receiver, one of the few times you'll see Hunter go to a running back, he was going for Stefanko, and Hunter is slow to get up as he is in some discomfort back at the 40-yard line. So that would be a tremendous loss to the Crabbers if Hunter were able, and not rather unable to continue. He seems to be okay. I just think he was real disappointed. He needed to get that ball there about a half a second to a second sooner, because the Fanko was open, Tim. He got the ball there late, and the defensive man did a good job of stepping in front of Stefanko, picking that ball off. Of course, now they got, they spotted the ball at the six yard line, and they cannot afford to make any mistake down here at this end with their backs at their own goal line. Well, worst things could have happened, Bob. With That's third right. 19, they would have probably had to punt had they not completed the pass. And the six yard line is as good a place as any to have the Falcons to start this drive. Left side handoff goes to Raymond, number 38. He crosses the 10, picking up a little breathing room for the Falcons. What they're so. trying to do, Tim, is just get that ball out, get a little bit of root speed, I'm sorry, a little bit of uh, space between them and the goal line and give them a little breathing room so that they can maneuver. Uh, you don't want to do anything fancy or anything uh, strange down there close to your own end zone. The Falcons got here beating Osborne Park, a 5-5 five five team, 20-6, to six, and then they whitewashed Woodridge last week, 28 to nothing. Zop the quarterback, picked up four the last time. This is Raymond, has the first down out close to the 20 yard line. So Raymond, who had good stats for the season, picks up the first down. Raymond was the leading rusher, as I mentioned before, with almost 1,000 yards for the Falcons. Well, Tim, they've got a long way to go. Now that ball is spotted just shy of the 20 at the 19, and it's 456 and running. So they've got a long way to go if they're going to try to drive the ball down to try to score before the end of the half. They're going to have to put the ball in the air. Zop tucks it inside. I'm telling you, the defense for Hampton is responding to that particular alignment extremely well, Bob. They've got two blocking backs. 
in front of the running back. Zop gets the ball, spins ever so slightly to his left, and then tries to follow those blocking backs in there. Guess what? The Crabbers were waiting for it in the form of number 65, Jamie Patterson. Oh, check that. Yeah, Mohamed Carlos, number 65, was right there and had Zop before he got uh, any substantial yardage to speak of. Oh, that You have to uh, take your hat off to that coaching staff. They've done a good job of preparing these young men for this game. They do it every single game. The Hampton Crabbers successful because of that coaching staff, I'm sure. Zop fakes, has time, has plenty of time. Now the left-hander throws it and completes it out close to a first down. The ball be marked at the 30, which would in fact be a first down for the Falcons. So Zop knew how much yardage he needed, threw the ball right on the money, and it's a first down for the Fuck Your Falcons. So the Falcons have been able to move the football, have not, however, been able to score as their deepest penetration was to the Hampton 38-yard line, only to cough the ball up and have the Crabbers turn that turnover into six points. Well, Tim, the Hampton Crabbers are are playing good defense out there, but uh, the Falcon quarterback did a good job. Zop did a good job that time of picking up the open receiver. Raymond struggling to the 35, as he is simply not to be denied. He picks up five strong yards. And uh, again, Raymond, a big boy, coming what, into this What's the ball size game. of him, Tim? He's 5'11", 185 pounds. He looks I, bigger than that. He does. He looks closer to 200. And he's got a big line in front of him to block. So he's a real strong-looking running back. He has those big legs that your strong running backs have to have. Well, they can't do that. They can't run the ball up the field like that. and get. They don't have time to do that, Tim, because we're under two minutes now. I'm sorry, under three minutes now to go in this first half. So they're going to have to pick up some big yardage some other way than five yards each time up the middle with Raymond. Now they got the two blocking backs right up there next to the quarterback again. Probably be a pass. Nope. And off goes to Raymond. Raymond drags a tackler for a couple of yards. Bring up a third down now. It's going to be third down and about three for the Falcons. So they'll be looking at a situation where you can possibly utilize those blocking backs or you can go for the pass, third down and two. As you mentioned though, the third clock becoming a major factor here. We're down inside of two minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first half. The Falcons do have their timeouts remaining and they have yeah, not that's used what, any that I recall. You read my mind, Tim, they've got three timeouts left. So I don't understand why the coaching staff doesn't use one of them uh, and uh, conserve some of that time on the clock. They really haven't gotten into any kind of panic situation there. Not necessarily throwing the ball either. Third down and two, Raymond gets the first down. And that will, in fact, stop the clock momentarily while they will advance the chains. First down. You know, we were uh, able to get a lot of information from some of the folks here at the stadium. And one of the things we heard about was the fact that the Falcons, during the season, actually went one game in which they called no plays from the huddle during an entire quarter. So right. they can operate with the two-minute drill, so to speak, but well, they have elected not to do so. That was a game plan, Tim. That was They worked on that all week long. So I don't look for them to do something here, but he has got to put the ball up in the air. He's got time, as he has had time. Now he gets some pressure, steps up, and he crosses the line of scrimmage, so he'll have to eat the football. He's driven out of bounds on the far side of the field. And Zop is driven out of bounds on the far side of the field. A minute 21, the time remaining as on that out of bounds play, the stopping of the clock. So they will not have to use one of their timeouts. The ball is marked squarely at the 45 yard line. Now we see Zop going to the referee for a equipment situation, something wrong with his helmet at this point. So again, to recap that the, the Crabbers Got here by beating Kickatan, a strong Kickatan team, in the opening game of the playoffs, and then defeated Kempsville handily last week, 30 to nothing. The Falcons got here by beating Osborne Park, 20 to six, and then whitewashing Woodbridge last week on a superb effort. They held the Woodbridge team to minus 26 yards rushing last week. Second down and about seven at the 45. Zop straight back, has time. 
Looks, pumps, and it's tipped away, which may have had as much to do with the incompletion of the pass. Tom Rogers, the man who made the interception earlier for the Falcons, was the intended receiver. And Todd Summers, a two-way player for the Crabbers, of course, had a hand on that ball. Looked like he might have just gotten enough to tip it away from Rogers. I believe he did, Tim. If he didn't tip it, at least he 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 caused the uh, receiver to adjust his the, the flight of the ball just by getting your hand in the way. Sometimes it makes you take your eye off the ball, and it's hard to concentrate when that happens. Uh, I look for the Crabbers to put a little more uh, pressure on the quarterback this time. They have not really to this point. Now, mix up in the backfield. Zop runs into his running back, and then he is smothered by Weymouth Williams as Williams took it. Check that. It was not Williams. It was number 80 for the Crabbers. That's a Rockman Carlos. Uh, I thought it was 60, but in fact, it was 80 Carlos who was right there to put the blast on Zop. They had definitely had a mix up in the backfield as Fadrell bumped into Zop on the spin around, and now we're looking at fourth down and five, and Snead is on to apparently, and I use that because I'm kind of intimidated by these trick plays that we've heard about, but he's standing at his 35 with an apparent punt, 40 seconds, the clock moving. Snead is, in fact, going to kick it. He gets a good kick away. Fielded by Stefanko inside the 20. Stefanko gets some running room out to the 25. So the Crabbers with the football. I'm looking around. I don't see any flags down. No flags at all, Tim. And there's 26 seconds to go in the half. And I don't look for the Crabbers to do anything fancy just to run this clock out and go in at halftime with... Uh, with a seven to nothing lead. You know, you've got you to figure, Bob, that we're looking at some respect being shown here by the Falcons. They didn't try to, to go into a hurry up situation with the time running down. They stayed with their game plan. They're only behind seven to nothing. And I think that was the right attitude to take. They didn't try and do anything uh, particularly hazardous to their health, so to speak, in, in the sense that they <laughs> kept it conservative and didn't get panicky, so. Uh, yeah, well, I Tim, I just watched they, at that time what happened. They had uh, the Falcons had an extra man on the field who was running off, and he had not gotten off the field, but the, the official just looked at him and kind of gave him a little high sign and didn't throw a flag. As I understand it, <laughs> as I understand it, and I, I'm not certain of this, and, and uh, certainly keep your cards and letters coming in, but it, uh, the, the line judge on that near side of the field, as long as the player gets past him, before the ball is snapped, that he is considered off the, the field. Evidently, of play. that's what happened, Tim, because he was by the line judge. He most certainly was. But it was close. There was certainly a, a situation where he almost had too many men on the field. Here's kind of something uh, that I've got to be surprised by. The Crabbers pick up three yards and call a timeout. Their last timeout was seven seconds. I would have thought they'd be happy to go into the locker room and, and get squared away for the second half, but Mike Smith never predictable. Well, not only that, Tim, but this is good coaching situations and a good time to, to to talk to the players out there in a situation. Maybe there was something that happened. Maybe it was a lineup or something. The coach needed to let them know something right then, then and there, and that's not a bad bad coaching move because you, you lose the timeout anyway. You don't carry them over to the second half. Now you have to consider what might transpire here. We've got two wide receivers coming to the near side for the Crabbers. That's and then a split end on the other side, Tim. Three wide receivers as Cofield, uh, check that Brian Gerzak who caught that big catch against Kempsville now mixed up in the backfield so there's no passing attack as Dwayne Murphy gets the call for the Crabbers and what we might have imagined might be the Hail Mary situation does not materialize. The Crabbers run the football and that is your halftime. So the Hampton Crabbers lead at halftime seven to nothing over the Fauquier Falcons. Bob, your opinion and comments on the first half. Well, Tim, I was real pleased with the way the Crabbers played the first half. They came out uh, defensively. The, the Falcons got a couple first downs. They stopped them. Uh, Hampton got one touchdown. I mean, one first down. They had to punt. But then they come back with that turnover and went down and scored on an excellent pass from Hunter to McGarry McLean. And, of course, the Hampton defense has just been uh, stalwart all year long, and we look for them to continue uh, into the second half. But, of course, this game is way far from being over. This is a good uh, team up here, uh, uh, the Falcons. So uh, Mike Smith and the coaching staff are going to do some, some adjustments at halftime, as will the uh, Falcon coaching staff, Tim. The Falcons, four shutouts on defense for the season. The Crabbers, six, the leading defensive team, and it's pretty much what we expected. Seven to nothing is our score at halftime. We'll be back with second half action after this brief timeout. Okay. A little cold, huh? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think... Back at halftime, Tim Cole with Bob Hintz. Uh, from Warrington, Virginia, the Fauquier Falcons and the Hampton Crabbers. The Crabbers defending state champions leading at halftime 7 to nothing at Chile Falcon Field. The temperature right now, 33 degrees. The wind chill temperature, 20 degrees. Bob, this has got to have a factor to go along with the second half here. Well, it sure does, Tim. I notice a lot of the, uh, the players out there have gloves on, which will give them a, a little bit of uh, comfort from the uh, conditions. But uh, when you get hit out there, it sometimes it's going to hurt. I noticed number 62 on the uh, Falcon team going off holding his hand. I don't know if he hurt himself bad or not, but I was talking to Coach Ty with Woodard, who is the assistant coach over at Kicktan High School. He's up with Kirk Newsom helping the, the Hampton staff doing a little bit of spotting for him. And uh, he was telling me that what they are doing in that backfield, uh, the Falcons are doing, is they're bringing two defensive linemen in at those blocking backs. Uh, or, or offensive linemen and using those big guys are trying to blow the Hampton Crabbers off the, the line of scrimmage, but I have not seen a team this year be able to blow the Hampton defensive uh, front line off that line of scrimmage, Tim. It's going to be hard to do, but this is a tremendous game. It's only a 7 to nothing game. Hampton will get the ball at the beginning of the second half because uh, they deferred the end of that first half. The Crabbers scoring the only points of the ball game, a two-yard run by Mike Stefanko. That came after Andre Davis recovered a Bart Zop fumble at the Hampton 38-yard line. They drove 62 yards, the key play being a 35-yard pass play from uh, Eric Hunter to Grady McLean, a super play in which McLean, in fact, was double covered and caught the ball inside the 10 yard line. It set up a first and goal from the five. Two plays later, Mike Stefanko went off the right side. The extra point try by Mike Houston was good. And the Hampton Crabbers trying to repeat as the reigning state champions of group AAA division six uh, are seven points ahead of the Falcons. There's a couple of things that are going on here. I was talking to some of the people around here who have followed the Falcons throughout the year, and they are, in fact, known as a second-half team, which sets up, uh, has got to be what has already been a tremendous first half. There you see the co-captains again being uh, greeted by the officials at the center of the field for a resumption of the elections on the part of the teams as to whether they kick or receive. There you also see some of the fans here, Chile fans, but getting back to my point, there's one other statistic that is extremely important, and that is that the Falcons have not been scored upon in the fourth quarter this year. So you want to keep that in mind, too, as the Crabbers, of course, have enough points to win the game right now, but uh, I'd be hard-pressed to determine uh, or even guess as to what the final score might be, but at least from the, the Crabbers' point of view, they're happy to be on top seven to nothing in a real hard-fought first half of football. Well, they will receive the ball, Tim, and they will be defending the goal to, our, to the viewers in our right. Uh, also up here during halftime, was able to talk with Coach uh, Bob Croft. I call him Coach because he used to coach the assistant principal over at over Hampton High School and Lowell Thomas, the principal, and they're sitting right straight across from us on a 50-yard line, but they were watching Grady McLean go up, and when he came down, he had about a foot before he came, was out of bounds to him on that long pass, and that was an exceptional catch and exceptional throw for the Hampton Crabbers, which allowed them to get that first uh, touchdown. Each team had a turnover in the first half. The Crabbers were intercepted, but harmlessly, as late in the second quarter, the ball was intercepted by Rogers of the Falcons. Uh, but however, they were starting from their six and were unable to do anything before the half ended. This is going to be taken at the eight yard line by Grady McLean. McLean hit and down immediately at the 15 yard line. A super defensive play on the special teams as the Falcons now will have the Crabbers back at their 15 yard line. Well, he just made a mistake, Tim, that time, which way to go. And he and he went one way and the guy was being blocked the same way and he ran right into that defensive uh, coverage of the Falcons. But that really uh, gives uh, the Crabbers poor field position to start the second half. Something that we mentioned numerous times last week, they had good field position against Kempsville and that is so vital in your uh, game attack is to have that good field position. The Crabbers will start from their 15. Eric Hunter is the quarterback. 
Left side, Stefanko out close to the 19-yard line. In on the stop for the Falcons was number 30, and that would be Dwight Robinson, one of the two-way players for the Falcons. They have about uh, the same number of two-way players as the Crabbers. Well, Tim, I've noticed something all year long that when Hampton plays another team, especially in the playoffs, when they make the other defensive team makes a, a play or something, they come up, start slapping each other on the, the back and trying to get them fired up, and Hampton just comes up to up to the goal, up to the line of scrimmage, and just does what they have to do, and and and. <laughs> You know, they don't do anything fancy. They just go out and play ball. Well, a good chance for Brian Gerzak to make another reception, but he couldn't hold on to the ball as Hunter, on the quick look in, got the ball quickly and probably hit uh, Gerzak in a bad spot, hit him right in the hands as uh, Brian was unable to hold on to that football. And it brings up a third down now, a third down and about, oh, six and a half for the first down for the Crabbers. The wind continues to blow across the field. So, again, not being a quarterback and never having played quarterback, I don't know what major factor that involves your passing attack, but I would say that it's probably, as long as it's consistent, I'm sure that helps somewhat if it is. Stefanko, and he will not get the first down. He barely gets back to the 20-yard line, maybe a yard at the most, and it'll be fourth down, and the Crabbers will have to punt. We got an injured player on the field for the Falcons. And that is the same man that you mentioned at halftime. That's Mike Bolt. The well, he's grabbing his, there's something wrong with his leg this time, but he was holding his hand when he went off to the uh, field the last time, Tim. He would be uh, a major loss to this team if, in fact, he was unable to continue. There you see Mike Bolt writhing in some discomfort. And uh, the Falcons, of course, have to be concerned about his inability to continue. Well, Tim, we also will see that the Falcons should end up with real good field position because uh, Grady, um, check me that, uh, Mike Houston will be back punting. The ball is set at the 25, so he'll be kicking the ball from about the 20. He'll be 7, 8 yards. I'm sorry, he'll be about 10, 15 yards back, so he may be kicking them from about the 15. And uh, they should end up with real, real good field position. I hope that young man does not hurt real bad, but he is, uh, definitely have some problems with, it uh, looks like they're working on the right leg. Well, they're still attending to Mike Bolt, and uh, the Crabbers, of course, must win this game to continue to have a chance to repeat as the state champions. The Falcons come into this game 8-0 and at home, and they've had the home team magic working for them all season long. And, of course, they will, uh, as I said, they've been known as a strong second-half team. Now, Mike Bolt's loss to the defense, if, in fact, he cannot continue, could be a major factor for the Falcons, and he is being helped off. He is not doing well at all. So the Crabbers will not have Mike Houston. He'll be standing back inside of his 10. And for the Falcons, they have two deep men back. Little or no rush put on Houston. He gets a wobbly kickoff. It takes a Falcon bounce, and they will have great field position as it is downed at the Hampton 43-yard line. So the Falcons will have super field position for this possession, trailing by the score of 7 to nothing. Tim Cole and Bob Hintz from Warrington, Virginia, state semifinals, Group AAA Division VI. This game airing Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. and Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Again, I remind you that the Phoebus Phantoms, that game, the, play, the game played Saturday at Todd Stadium, will be aired at Tuesday and Thursday at 9 p.m., Friday morning at 9 a.m., right here on Channel 29. Well, they've got a double wing set situation set up with a man in motion this time, Tim. It's the first time we've seen this in their they quarterback. Him, they just shot on his side. Play. What a nice play as Raymond has the ball, and he's got big yardage down across the 30 to the 25-yard line. So one of those trick plays that the Falcons have been so well known for this season is a big gainer. Tim, that was a, that is a forward pass, but it's like a little shuffle pass that you just pop the ball to the the. Uh, Big running back that is looking like he's leading interference. In fact, he becomes a receiver, and they really picked up a lot of yardage because they're clear down to the uh, crabber. What is I can't see that. 25. 25-yard 25 line. So at the 25 of Hampton, the deepest penetration for the Falcons this afternoon. Raymond lines up on a wing to the far side. The running backs are Raymond, or make that, Vaudrell and Robinson. Vaudrell and Robinson, the, the backs. Vaudrell gets the call across 
the 20 down to the 19-yard line. So that running attack for the Falcons that is so well known in this area of Virginia continues to pay dividends for them as they've got the ball now across the 20 down at the Hampton 18. Pick up of about seven. But we have second down and three. Excuse me, Tim. We have seen all year long that Hampton will let a team get down there close like this, but then they really get tough when they get close to their 20-yard line. Get look close to that goal line. They bend a little bit, but they haven't broke much, much at all this year. Six shutouts for the defending state champions. Only 42 points. 16 of those coming in the battle game. Zop, right side. Fatrell gets the call. He gets a couple of tough yards. It's going to be third down, but it'll be third and about uh, well, a little more than one for the Falcons. They need to get to the 15. They need to literally cross the 15 for the first down. Now, well, I that's close know, to about a yard and a half, Tim. I don't know what their kicking game is like, nor do I know whether they'd want to try a field goal if they fail to get the first down. 8.22, clock is moving, third quarter. Cravers seven, Falcons nothing. Well, they got a full house backfield, Tim. Quarterback keeper, Zop has the first down and then some. And that Across was an excellent call. Well, Zop is a big quarterback. There's no question about his size. He's six feet, 185 pounder. He's a junior, and he'll be back for the Falcons next year. Shows a lot of poise out there. So the Falcons have a first down at the Hampton 14-yard line. The Hampton defense has been tough all year, and they'll have to be tough once again. Anchored in the middle of that line by Weymouth Williams. From the 14, 7.45, clock moving. Zop keeps. The game play. Same play that was successful for them earlier. Raymond has good yardage again down close to the 10-yard line. He gets away from the tacklers, runs into the end zone, but it's well after the play had been whistled dead. But again, a good gainer on that little shuffle play. That was exactly the same play that had the big gainer earlier. Well, sure it was, Tim, but they're going to have to find out. The Hampton Crab Crabber's going to have to find out that that big number 38, he carries that ball. He's tough to bring down. You're going to have to tackle him low, stop those wheels from moving. I just can't, I have a hard time believing he's only 185 pounds. He looks closer to 200. He most certainly does. He may have been at the beginning of the season, but he's, <laughs> he's a big young man. Now they got two blocking backs over to the weak side of the uh, left side of the formation. Zop gives to Raymond. Raymond struggles down close to the five. Amongst others, Todd Summers, number 42, got a hand on him. Also in on the stop for the Crabbers, 55. That's Jefferson Lawrence. And that big offensive line for the Falcons is, in fact, moving the defensive line for the Crabbers back pretty well. So the Crabbers are going to have to dig in now. It's at the six-yard line. It's third down and a yard. The Falcons certainly can get a first down without scoring, and it looks pretty tough now for the Crabbers. Well, last time in this situation, Tim, there was a quarterback sneak, so I don't know if he's going to do that again or not, but they're in a two-down situation. They have two tries to get this ball across the five-yard line. Two blocking backs to the left of the quarterback, Zop. On the quarterback keeper, first down and then some. Down close to the two-yard line is Zop. And another first and goal for the Falcons. There was an excellent job that time because uh, number 70 for the Crabbers was, was crashing in and had the quarterback zeroed in. That Sherwood Jones had him zeroed in, and somebody blocked him just as he was reaching for the quarterback. So this really gives the, the Crabbers a uh, uh, tough situation. First to go from about the one-yard line, Tim. There you see the coaching staff, head coach Shumar of the Fakir Falcons talking to his quarterback, Zop, and amongst others. Again, we're on the near side, the home side of the field. We can't get those close-in shots of the Hampton huddle for most of you as we would like to have, although our one camera uh, does have good range to pick up the far side of the field. A lot of hardy Hampton fans here. I was driving through this beautiful countryside on the way up here this morning. Bob, I'm sure you enjoyed the same thing. It's amazing. People who, there you see a lot of the Crabber fans. The hardy Hampton Crabber fans made this long trip up here. Uh, Warrington has set quite a ways back off of I-95. A lot of people, myself included, who might have thought it was just a short jaunt from the interstate. Uh, I was surprised to find out it's about 35 miles from the interstate. 
But uh, you go through some of the prettiest country you've ever seen. The, yeah, it is anybody really. Anybody who thinks that the city has gobbled up all the country hasn't been up in this neck of the woods in a while. No, it is. It's really pretty up here, Tim. Beautiful farms and uh, just a gorgeous part of the country to. to visit. Wouldn't want to live here. <laughs> it's cold up here. <laughs> Wouldn't want to live up here. First Come up here and do some skiing, maybe. That's about it. First and goal at the two. The Falcons with obviously their best threat of the ball game. Zop is the quarterback. Gives to the running back. He's in for the touchdown. That is Corey Fadrell. Fadrell simply blew out the right side of his line. And the left side defensive line couldn't stop him. He goes in, and it's now 7-6. to six. Well, number 79 is going in, Tim. He's a hunk, ain't he? <laughs> he is a horse. That's Bill Steele. He goes 6 foot tall, 309. Oh, now, see, we got one of these, these uh, oh, they uh, line up over here and call, set up. This going to, I assume they're going to kick a, an extra point. You can't ever tell about this team. An extremely important extra point, I might add. This one will tie it. Sheen will kick out of the hold of Abergast, and it is going to be no good. So the ball goes in to a huddle of players. There's no flags down, and the Crabbers hold a precarious one-point lead with six minutes to go here in the third quarter. Well, Tim, they were definitely going for two. They had their wingman in motion and the holder was just gonna pop the ball to him like a little shuffle pass, and he was gonna come around the right side, but the Hampton Crabbers got in it because of the, uh, the miss uh, handle on the snap. So the Falcons going for the lead, come up with nothing, and now they trail by one point. And the game has been just that close. Both of these teams have played superbly on defense. The offense has been there for the Crabbers when they had to get that first score. And the Falcons have shown a lot of offense here in the second quarter. So we're going to be, again, you got to look for some strange things here when the Falcons kick the ball. Now that sun is directly into their faces here in the third quarter. And... It's kick, kick to one of the up men. This is taken by Stefanko at the 20. Stefanko looking to set up the return, and he's not going to get much. He is slowed under at the 23. So the special teams for the Falcons showing superb efforts as they stop the Crabbers cold on the kickoff. Well, they most certainly do, Tim. They kicked the ball off from the right hash mark, and that time they kicked it across field to Stefanko, and uh, he still, uh, he, he was, the run back was on around the left side, so by the time he got over here, the uh, pursuit was already down there on him. But at least they're not at the 16. They've got a little bit better field position they had to start the second half. An eight yard better situation. They're at their 23, the Crabbers are, and leading by the score of seven to six. This is Stefanko, get a little running room on the right side, out close to the 28 yard line. Pick up of about four. Crabbers trying to get some offense going here. They were pushed down the field. Let's take nothing away from the Falcons. They did a good job on that touchdown drive, and they literally pushed the Crabbers back down the field. So whether they can recover and show some of their own offense will be the big question right now for the Hampton Crabbers. And the big play in that drive, Tim, was that little shuffle pass uh, that they threw. And Summers coming to the near side shows good strength for the little guy. Summers and Stefanko, as we've mentioned on numerous occasions, built very similarly. Uh, Summers comes into the ball game listed as 5'6", 157, which is right about the same number as Stefanko. They list Stefanko at about 12 pounds lighter, but uh, you can't tell that much difference in their frames. They're very small, but boy, they're powerful. And Summers carried a, a tackler for the first down out to the, well, close to the 35. Well, Tim, we'll find out if Mike Bolt being out of there and that linebacking crew is going to affect this uh, defense or not. Bolt is not in there. Murphy gets the call this time. He goes off the right side for a couple of yards. So the Crabbers have gone with the bread and butter all year long. That's their running attack. Summers, Stefanko, and Murphy. And they've passed when they've had to. And certainly in this ball game, we've seen more than a fair success on the part of Eric Hunter as he's connected on a couple of long passes. You know, in that last possession, the first, when they threw that ball to Gerzak, uh, that would have been a, a close to a first down, and instead they, they really had to give the ball up on a kicking situation because of that 
particular play. That's right, because he was wide open, Tim, and he we did have the first down yardage had he uh, received the ball. This is Summers. He breaks it open across the 40, and it'll be a first down for the Crabbers out at the 46-yard line. I tell you what, Tim, the Hampton Crabbers are firing off that offensive line and are blowing up in some big holes because uh, that time uh, Summers got through there was nobody there towards him until he got into the secondary. Mike Smith bringing the plays in with the running backs. Stefanko replaces Summers bringing the play in. They've marked the ball across the 46, first and 10 for the Crabbers. The sun's shining brightly now at Falcon Field, and this is Stefanko. He gets the call out to the 48, pick up of maybe two or three. So again, Stefanko going pretty much up the middle. He'll come back out now, and Todd Summers will bring in another play. Pick up of a long two for Stefanko, second down and about eight. There you see the long shadows as the sun shining brightly here late in the afternoon in Warrington. Well, Tim, there's not too many open spots in the sky above us, but the sun done found something open because they're there. Summers spinning away from a tackler. He's still on his feet, and he's finally dragged down, but not before he gets down to the 40-yard line of the Falcons. So he Todd Summers goody, showing, goody runner, oh, he's showing superb effort, and we've seen this time and again by the running backs of the Crabbers. They're not big. They're not strong-looking running backs, but boy, do they do the job for the Crabbers. And give credit to that offensive line for the Crabbers. They are, as you said, they are moving some big boys off of that Falcon line. They sure are, Tim, and that was an excellent job of, of uh, second effort on uh, Summers' part because he was hit two or three times and he just spun right out of the grasp and kept around going. I see Mike Bolt, number 62, loosening up on the side. Hunter has some time. Now he's going to get pressure and he'll be taken down. He just simply couldn't get enough time as he had gotten away from one would-be tackler and then he was sacked. Well, Tim, he, he had to scramble to his left, so that means he had to try to turn his shoulders to throw the ball, and the pressure was such that he never could turn his shoulders to even get anything on the ball that time. The Falcons losing two games this season by a total of six points, and they avenged one of those losses. They lost early in the season 13-10 to to Woodbridge and then came back and demolished that same Woodbridge team 28 to nothing last week. Hunter on the draw play. Summers looks for some running room. He gets outside. He's down across the 30. He's racing for the corner. He's driven out of bounds, but actually not quite out of bounds, but inside the 15-yard line. Well, Tim, did you? I don't know if you saw that or not, but that the tackler coming in was really had a beat on Summers, and Summers put his shoulder down and hit. I don't know who tackled who, but that was an excellent call, that draw play, because the, obviously the Falcons were looking for an offensive pass that time, a pass play, and they, that draw was an excellent call. All the way down to the 14-yard line. The clock continues to move. A minute 24 and moving. Remain here in the third quarter. This is Summers. Gets the call again. Slashes off the right side. Is finally taken down as he gets close to the 11-yard line. And again, Summers is just breaking tackles. These big boys from the Falcons are, are just having a tough time bringing down little Todd Summers. Well, he's his uh, center of gravity is obviously low because he's small, but Tim, he keeps his feet moving and he twists and it's hard to get a clean shot at him. And you can't arm tackle these kids, even though they're small. And these big guys might think they can just reach out there with an arm and tackle them. You're not going to do that with uh, any of these uh, backs for the Hampton Crabbers. Pick up of about two and a half, three yards. Hunter on the quarterback option, carrying that ball like a loaf of bread, is finally hit and taken down after little or no gain. A play we haven't seen the Crabbers run a lot this season, and that is the option where the quarterback runs parallel to the line of scrimmage with the option to pitch out. Always kind of gets my, th my heart up in the middle of my throat because I, I kind of worry about when you carry that ball like that, there's a lot of options that can happen, and, and most of them aren't good for the Crabbers. Mike Bolt, number 62, the uh, line, fine linebacker for the Falcons, just returned to the game, Tim, and not too soon because they really need him. He is an in integral part of that uh, defense uh, for the Falcons, but the, now the Hampton Crabbers have got a third, and I think they're going to just let the clock run out and, and uh, go into the fourth quarter, Tim. All right, so the third quarter has come to a conclusion. We've had one score here in the third quarter, and that was a two-yard run by Fottrell of the Falcons to make the score 7-6 to six as the Falcons 
appeared to be going for a two-point conversion, which would have given them the lead. And instead, it was foiled, and the Crabbers keep a one-point lead. The touchdown for the Crabbers scored on a 62-yard drive. Mike Stefanko from two yards out. The extra point, which is the difference in this ball game, was kicked by Mike Houston. And you have to wonder if the Crabbers are unable to get a first down here. Would we look to see Mike Houston make it a four-point ball game, or would you, in fact, go for the first down? What would you do if you get to that point, Bob? Well, let me see what... <laughs> I know, it's, it's a tough call. I'm, I'm maybe putting uh, things ahead of themselves, but it is third and long, and, and the Falcon defense is tough. So, uh, as an option, that's something we might consider. Well, and if, you, if you're thinking field goal, you're thinking i got to move that ball a little more to the center and off of this uh, hash mark over here on the right side anyway, Tim. But uh, I know they got a lot of confidence in Mike Houston. They have used him all year long. But uh, at this point, I don't know what kind of a kicker they have, whether they're uh, a field goal threat or not. So the, uh, the Hampton Crabbers could very well say, we're going to go ahead and get our uh, first down. they got a double wide out to the far side of the field, Tim. They're spreading that Hyman. defense out. Inside handoff, Stefanko. Stefanko has stood up as he crosses the 10 to about the nine, so they might be positioning it for Houston's attempted field goal. We are seeing the kicking team coming on the field for the Crabbers. And Tim, they moved the ball over to the left a little bit, so that gives uh, Mike Houston a little better angle to kick the ball this time. There isn't a great deal of wind right now. I'm looking at the flag, which is in the end zone that he'll be kicking into. It is going across the field, but it's not apparently a substantial win at this point. Houston's kick is long enough and it's good. So Mike Houston puts it in from the 15-yard line, a 25-yard field goal. Well, Tim, uh, you had mentioned earlier that uh, the Falcons have not had anybody score on them on the fourth quarter. Is that's that what correct. you said? That's well, that, that's out the window. That's out the window, and you have to wonder. I don't know that it's a major factor, but you might wonder what mentally that might do to the Falcons. They have obviously been proud of that fact, and whether or not it'll have an effect, we'll, we'll see. But you get to this point, it's not going to make that much difference. The Falcons are a good football team. They're a disciplined football team, and we're in for what is apparently is going to be one heck of a fourth quarter here. We most certainly are, Tim, and we'll notice that that time that the Hampton Crabbers drew, drove that ball from about their 23 all the way down to get that uh, that three points on the field goal. And, of course, the big play on that was the draw play where Summers took the ball, went off to the left side, and picked up tremendous yardage. Mike Houston has connected on his sixth field goal of the season, has 27 extra points on the season, and has been fairly successful with the field goals. This one gives the Crabbers a four-point advantage. And, of course, that could loom to be a major factor down the stretch here. We've got 11-24 remaining in the ballgame. The winner advances to the finals. That short kick along the sidelines. Again, the Crabbers, it goes out of bounds, and that will be kicked over. Or do they have, in fact, the option to take it there? Well, they could. They'll, I'm not sure if they'll take it there, make them kick off again, or what they'll try to do, Tim. But that was a uh, set play that may be a penalty, make them kick the ball again. They may take the ball where it is. Used to be if it went out of bounds, they got the ball on a 40. So yeah. I'm not sure what happens now. That is a, a fact. I remember that from my old high school days that they always seemed unfair. If it went out of bounds, they got it at the 40, but uh, we'll wait and see. The options being explained to the Falcons. The illegal procedure against the Crabbers indicated it is refused, and it'll be first down from the point that the ball went out of bounds. So well, that's not bad field position, Tim. No, and you know, you have to wonder. I've seen the Crabbers do this. I've seen other teams do this this season. I have to wonder why they kick it away from, you know, they do try and put it between the front line of receivers and the deep line and kind of hope that ball will just float around and somebody can pounce on it. Sometimes what they do is pop the ball up like a, you know, like a little uh, infield fly, Tim, where they just try to pop it over that front line, and he didn't uh, pop the ball up. In fact, he kicked it rather hard. And I saw the coach Danny Mitchell was on the sideline. The ball went right towards where Danny was standing. So the Falcons, who have shown they can move the football, take over first and 10 from their 32. They're in a double wing this time, Tim, with wings on both sides. Long count by Zop. He may be calling an audible. Handoff goes inside to Fadrell. Fadrell crosses the... 
35 to about the 37. Well, they they run basically the same plays, Tim. That they uh, they now have, have a whole lot of plays. They just show a whole lot of different formations. That times they had a double wing, and then they brought the wing on the right side in in motion. And understand now, they always will be unbalanced to the right. They'll have four men to the right side of the center and two men to the left side of the center. And occasionally they'll put a whole bunch of people on the other side. So. <laughs> They'll show you a hundred different ways. Yeah, now they got a wing to the weak side or to the two people on this side. Zop on that pitch, and it doesn't work this time. The Hampton well, defense is ready for it. They were ready for that little old shuffle pass this time. They've shown that. That's the third time they've run it. They've been successful, really successful the first time. Second time they picked up some decent yardage. Tim, this time they didn't pick up anything. So the adjustments being made by the Crabber coaching staff on the defense, as you might expect, and one of the disadvantages of having a lot of two-way players, you know, we talked about this once earlier, is that during the times when your offense has the ball, you could normally sit your defense down and say, all right, guys, this is what we need to do. But you've got a lot of two-way players for the Crabbers. These fellas are on the field all the time. Yeah, and it's hard to make some adjustments. It really is hard to make some adjustments, Tim. Inside of 10 minutes to go, a big third down and five for the Falcons. They need to get out to the 42-yard line. Again, in motion to the near side. Same play, only this time, instead of shuffling it, he wants to pass. Zop throws it out, and it's caught, but it's going to be real close to a first down. It depends on where he spots that ball, Tim, and from where he's vantage point he's got right now, it looks like it's short, but uh, they're in a position right now where they have to Go, go ahead and go for it, that they're not going to uh, worry about where that ball is. They're going to go ahead and go for the first down because it's that close, I'm sure, if they didn't already get it. Now, Todd Summers had a chance to possibly go for an interception or overplay the man, and he chose not to. He took this the safe way, waited for the ball to be in the possession of the ball, uh, the ball carrier, and then he hit him, and it is enough for a first down by the length of the football. So Todd Summers played it safe, and not to certainly not to criticize the way he played it. That's the way you play it in a tight ball game. You don't go overplay the man and then watch six points get registered. Well, that's for sure, Tim. You got to uh, you got to make sure that they don't score on you, and that's what he did. But that was a little dangerous play. That was a man that was in motion, and uh, the quarterback had to throw back across the field. So they they are, this this team, which doesn't throw much, have thrown a whole lot today. From the 42, first down for the Falcons. They're in a double wing again. Now they put the man in motion from this side, Tim, and they go straight up the middle. Fadrell gets the handoff. He crosses the 45 down to about the 47. A little action downfield between one of the Crabbers and Falcons. Uh, boys will be boys. No flags at this point. And the reason I say at this point is I'm sure the officials will say, look, don't carry this any further, and we'll just let it go. Somebody, a little contact down. Well, there was, was contact after the whistle blown, and uh, and the uh, Falcon guy kept right on pushing the Hampton guy, so the Hampton guy threw him down. So uh, there's no love lost, but now they're going to take their first time out of the game, Tim. They actually, being the Falcons. That's their second time out, I'm actually. sorry. And it's the second time out of the second half, so that could be a factor down the road as the Falcons will take a timeout. And we have 8.33 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Crabbers well, leading by the score of 10 to 6. Are, there's a good a good picture right there of the coaching staff of the Falcons talking to number 17, Zop, the quarterback. And uh, one thing for sure, Tim, that they have to score a touchdown. Field goal will do them absolutely no good at this point. Uh, just gets them within one point. They have to get, get the lead, so they have to go down and try to score a touchdown. Of course, uh, they've got a long way that they have to drive. They've got... Uh, looks like about 54 yards they have to drive to get the ball down there and try not to make a mistake and do it before the time runs out. Don't let the shorts that you saw that man wearing fool you. It's 20-degree wind <laughs> chill factor out here this afternoon. Yeah, that's that crazy guy they're talking well, about. Well, there's two of them down there. Uh, He's got a brother. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's they say uh, it gets cold up here, but they said last week when they played uh, Woodbridge Tim that it was snowing and he was that way in the blizzard. Well, if you're crazy last week, you're crazy this week. I guess is how it goes. Second down and five. Zop pitches out, and Summers makes contact, and then Sherwood Jones finishes the job for the Crabbers. Pickup of about three yards, so they're just shy of the midfield stripe. They're going to mark it 
about the 49. They need to get to the 48 of Hampton. So it'll be a third down and about three. A big down. And uh, the Crabbers are looking at a situation where they obviously want to hold the Falcons at this point. And it's getting late in the ball game. The clock continues to move. Well, now it's stopped on the out-of-bounds play. Uh, I did not realize he was out of bounds. I guess he was, but Todd Summers had a chance to get him in the backfield, but they got both blocker backs right up to the right side because they need to try to get this first down. Third down and short, and it looks like a first down on second effort. A good second effort by Corey Fadrell as he gets the first down, moving that defense back. You know, that's why, and again, I, I'm certainly not going to second guess Mike Smith. I've tried to do it a couple of times, and he always proves me to be wrong. But I had to wonder about that short kickoff. If you can, you know, the, the Falcons showed they can move the football here in the second half, and you kick it off short, give them a 32-yard line to begin with. You have to wonder. It makes them just that much closer to the other end zone. Well, from what I understand, they are a good special teams team, that they do run back the ball well. And, of course, evidently he didn't want that to happen. But... Uh, you and I know that they've got a lot of confidence in this uh, Crabber defense. they got a double wing out there this time, Tim. At the Hampton 47-yard line, and the lineman for the Falcons, first time we've seen any mental errors in this ball game. One of the linemen on the right side of the Falcon line, that's number 77, Scott Crocker, the 5'10", 238-pound junior, raised up out of that three-point stance before the ball was snapped. So this is a big down. Of course, it would have been much worse had it been on that third and short a while ago. Oh, but absolutely, now, Tim. But he stood straight up as if he was going to pass block. So they, maybe they had a pass play call that time because he definitely was not firing across the line of scrimmage. He was standing, he was coming up like he was in a pass blocking uh, situation. In a game that has seen very few penalties, a first and 15 now as they've backed him up to their 47. And in motion to the near side is Robinson. Zop wants to throw, he's got a man open, he can't hold on to it. A good effort on the part of the intended receiver who is 83, Joey Chadre, as he was the man open. He had to kind of lunge for the ball and just narrowly missed making contact and it falls harmlessly incomplete, second down and 15. Well, that was a uh, pass wasn't right on the money. He was open, but uh, Zop just did not get the ball to him that time, Tim. But now it's the second and 15, so they are definitely in a situation where they're going to have to put the ball in the air. And uh, I'm very surprised that this offensive line is keeping those defensive rushers out because they do a good job of putting uh, pressure on it. they got four wide receivers this time, Tim. This is a lateral, so look out. It's a pass situation. Got the, it's going to be knocked incomplete as Grady McLean had a great opportunity to intercept. Then we saw again the flea flicker. The Tim, ball was lateral. Tim, what happens that time? I'm, let, me, let me interrupt you here a second. The second string quarterback was underneath the center. He threw the ball out here on a lateral to number 17, the regular quarterback, Zop, who was out here as a wide receiver, and then he threw it downfield and hit the man in the hands, and McLean had the ball, and it was knocked out of his hand. So that's the recap. <laughs> oh, that was close to being, either way, it would have been a big play. Had McLean come up with it, of course, with 7-14 to go in the ball game, it would have been a big turnover. It goes incomplete. If it had been caught, they would have had a big first down deep in Hampton territory. Third down and 15, and it's crunch time for the Falcons. They've got to come up with a big play right now. Fake, and Zop has all day long. He finally throws, and it's knocked away on a super defensive play. Hyman did a good job that time. Antonio Hyman timed that perfectly as the intended receiver was wide open, and Hyman just jumped in there at the last second and knocked the ball away. Incomplete, fourth down and 15 at the 47. And Tim, you a had play. a situation here. I don't mean to over, override you, but here we got a fourth down. If you give the ball to the Crabbers, they can have a chance to run the clock out. Look for some fancy thing out of punt formation, perhaps. They've been known to do all kinds of things up here. Of course, they've been trying to psych everybody, your, yourself and myself, out with all this talk of trick plays, but Sneed will, in fact, kick the ball away. It's a low end-over-end -end kick. Hyman is back deep along with Stefanko. They'll just let it roll dead as they're not in any hurry to do anything but the ball. It rolls dead at the 16 of Hampton. 6.57 to go. We're setting up a real... Real exciting finish to this ball game. The victors go on to play either Highland Springs or T.C. Williams. 
the losers had a great season, and that's all. That's it, Tim. Now, the Hampton Crabbers get a couple of first downs here. They can run this ball out. Uh, of course, they you and I know that uh, we have seen a situation where Mike Smith gets the people back in. They're just going to run the ball, and everybody thinks they're going to run it. And watch out, he throws a pass. So nothing's predictable in this ball game. At the 16, a reminder that I believe the Falcons have used two of their timeouts. That could become a factor. Inside handoff across the 15 to, or check that across the 20 to about the 21 is Mike Stefanko, the main ball carrier for the Crabbers. And the reason I say main is when you key on Stefanko, they'll give it to Summers. You key on Summers, they'll give it to Murphy. If you key on Murphy, the hunter will throw the ball. So they do a super job of keeping the defense uh, on the other that, side. They do that, Tim. And the clock is running with six, six minutes to go. And uh, this, I may have to leave you here uh, shortly and run down to the field and take AG's place. Inside of six minutes, this is Summers. The Falcons, of course, trying to tackle that football as Summers gets across the 25. He'll be short of the first down. And now we have a big third down coming up as they mark it just across the 25. The Crabbers have to get to about the 28 to get a first down. So you talk about big third down plays. Five and a half minutes to go in the ball game. The clock is moving and the Crabbers desperately need a first down. The Falcons desperately need to stop them from a first down. Third down, it's crunch time for the Crabbers. They've got Stefanko in the backfield along with Murphy. And now a timeout by the Crabbers. They might have tried their Good old uh, irregular cadence count. It didn't fool the Falcons. No one moved on that side of the field. That's not a bad call, Tim. You had two timeouts, three timeouts anyway. And uh, if you can't draw them offside, if you can, you get the automatic first down because of the penalty. If you don't, then you call a timeout. Come on, let the coach talk and uh, see if we can't get something going here. To get, see if we can get that first, get that first down. The Falcons are a well-coached football team. Of course, they got a 10 and 2 record and I was told uh, by some people here that they graduated the entire starting offensive team last year so you know that that had to be a tough situation for the coach he comes in and, and takes a relatively inexperienced team and they go 10 and 2 and giving Hampton all they want to have right now 10 to 6 is our score in case you joined us late the Crabbers scored first Mike Stefanko capped a 62 yard drive with a 2 yard touchdown run Mike Houston made it 7 to nothing with the extra point try and that's how we stood at halftime in the third quarter, the Falcons came out, drove the length of the field, capped their touchdown with a two-yard plunge by their big ball carrier, Fadrell, and the extra point try, where they were going for two points, in fact, failed, and the Crabbers held on to a one-point lead. And then the Falcons, or excuse me, the Crabbers, were able to score a 25-yard field goal by Mike Houston, and that's our score, 10 to 6. 5.13 to go, third down and two for the Crabbers. Tight backfield, it's not gonna be a first down. The Crabbers have been stopped on the first down, and now the Crabbers will have to probably kick the ball. Well, it looks like what they're gonna do is gonna spot the ball and then take a look at it before they say it, because it's very, very close to a first down. It would appear that it's gonna come up short. I'm at an angle here where old Eagle Eye is not going to go out on a limb, but I would say they'll come up about the length of the football. It's, it's going to be close, Tim. An important measurement, it's and it is down. a first down. Well, let's see now. They're repositioning the chains to make sure they've got it where it's supposed to be. First down for the Crabbers. Well, Tim, uh, we got five minutes to go here. I might uh, slip and get on out of here for a minute. All right, I, for a minute, you're going to go down there and hopefully talk to some of the Crabbers and the coaches at the conclusion of the ball game. My, 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 I call that one wrong. Eagle Eye had that one all. I was sure he was about a, at least a foot and a half shy. And by the nose of the football, uh, after the jury was out for a moment or two, the Crabbers get a crucial first down. The Crabbers with four fresh downs. Five, check that, 440 remains in the ball game. Todd Summers gets the call for the Crabbers. 
Again, the sun shining late in the afternoon here in Warrington, Virginia. Tim Cole with Bob Hintz as we are inside of four and a half minutes to go. You see the long shadows. The Crabbers have the disadvantage of looking into the sun at this point as they are staring directly into the sun coming down the field. But I don't think we'll anticipate a great deal of passing by the Crabbers at this point as long as they can successfully pick up yardage rushing. The ball is marked just shy of the 30. Second down and a long eight. This is Summers trying to try the left side. He gets little or nothing, maybe a yard or two. And again, your big third down situation comes up. The clock continues to be a major factor. 343 remains in the ball game. The Crabbers have two timeouts remaining. The Falcons have but one timeout remaining. Again, our thanks to the fine folks here at Fauquier High School. The Falcon people have been most gracious to our crew, uh, fed us well at halftime with ham biscuits and potato salad and chips and cheese and crackers and drinks. It was wonderful. So we really appreciate the hospitality shown by these nice folks here in Warrenton, Virginia. Third down and about five for the Crabbers. 310 remains. This is Stefanko looking for what could have been a big first down. He does not get the first down. And now the Crabbers will look at a fourth down. And the Falcons, again, have to just sit there and watch the clock move because they can ill afford to use their last timeout at this point. We'll see the Crabbers bring in the kicking team. They're well short of a first down. And they'll let as much time elapse as they can before they kick the ball. Inside of 2.35 to go, nail-biting time. The Crabber defending state champions. Houston gets a high snap. There's a man rushing. He avoids him and kicks the ball. Now we'll have to see if a flag goes down. It's a great kick as Houston is able to get good foot on it. There's six or seven Crabbers chasing Raymond, and he will be driven down to the ground inbounds. Of course, the clock will stop on the change of possession. But my, oh my, I had to wonder if there were some people that might have left early, and I didn't see a flag forthcoming. 2.16 is the time remaining. One time out has all the Falcons have left. They've marked it at the 26-yard line, and the clock is restarted. They did not get out of bounds, and that is, again, a crucial situation for the Falcons. Clock is moving, 2.05. One timeout, 25-yard line. They've got 75 yards to go, and they're down by four points. So a field goal will not do any good. Zop, that's a lateral. That ball is live. It goes out of bounds at the 20-yard line, or make that the 19. As we, again, saw the flea flicker play, that is Jeff Lindstrom, a junior quarterback who took the snap from center, threw the ball out in the flat for Zop, the regular quarterback, hoping that he would be able to throw the ball. His throw was errant and harmlessly, uh, at that point, went out of bounds. And it goes all the way back to the 19-yard line. So the Falcons, they get the clock stopped as the ball went out of bounds with a minute 54 to go. But importantly, they lost six yards on that play. Again. Same play, Zop gets the pass, or I should say lateral. He throws downfield, he's got a man open, and he's driven out of bounds, stopping the clock, and a first down for the Falcons. The man making the grab was yet another quarterback. Or check that, he's listed as an end. That's Scott Taylor, who took a snap from center earlier here in the second half. So a first down for the Falcons as they're across the 40 out to the 42, 43 yard line. 145 is the time remaining. One timeout left for the Falcons. Double wide out to the near side. Double wide out, same class again. This is Zop. He's got all kinds of time because now he can throw a pass. He gets it off and it's incomplete as the intended receiver downfield was Dwight Robinson, number 30, and he was stuck and stuck well by Hyman of the Hampton Crabbers. Hyman coming up with a super defensive play just a short while ago when he stepped inside of the intended receiver for the Falcons and knocked the ball away on an incomplete pass. 138 remains as we continue to see almost amazing plays from the Falcons. They have this situation where they snap the ball to the reserve quarterback. He throws a lateral out. Now the regular quarterback, Zop, is over center. There's something up. 138 to go in the ball game. 
No, it's not Zapp. Now, this, uh, this is again, this is a loose ball. This ball is not a pass. It's still loose. It's finally gathered in by Zapp, but not before it goes all the way back to the 18-yard line. So the trick play backfires on the Falcons as they will lose substantial yardage, about 20 yards. There you see the scoreboard, 10 to 6. The clock remains in the favor of the Crabbers. Now the last timeout is being called by the Falcons. They have a third down. The ball is marked at their 19, and they have to get all the way to their 47 for a first down. I don't have a calculator, but I think that's a roughly, there you see it, 34 yards to go for the first down. So the Hampton defense has come up big, but they're not out of the woods yet. A minute 16 remains in the ball game, and we have uh, Bob Hintz has gone down to the sidelines, and hopefully, there you see him at the right-hand corner of your screen. Now you uh, are looking at the head coach, Charma, of the Falcons, talking with his quarterback, Zop. And uh, Bob, if you can hear me down on the sidelines, we'll be going to you momentarily. I see you're standing next to our cameraman. There you see him at the right-hand side of your screen with the brown jacket on. That's my partner in crime, Bob Hintz, as he will be down on the field, hopefully with a happy Hampton Crabbers team, if they should hold on for this hard-fought victory. I'll tell you, the Falcons have given the Crabbers everything they wanted, as we expected they would. There you see Bob, doing a little double duty there. Third down and 34. And Zop is the quarterback. Got two wings. Zop at quarterback. Zop with a long count. The Falcons have no timeouts left. Zop has time. The Crabber defense trying to cover the intended receiver. Zop steps up, gets away from one would-be tackler. Being chased by Wilson. Wilson has popped. And now across the center of the field is completed to Robinson. This play taking a lot of time. And the Crabbers now will finally get the man stopped. It's fourth down. We're inside of a minute. No timeouts remain for the Falcons. There you see the story. 51 seconds. Clock moving is fourth down and 10 for the Falcons. And I'm out of breath. They've got to get a first down here or the ball game is over. The Crabber defense sets up. Fourth and 10. No timeouts left. Zop, who has had all day, again, has plenty of time. Throws it out. It's completed, but it's going to go over to the Crabbers on downs. Again, Todd Summers comes up with a good defensive effort. The catch is made by the receiver, but it goes as for not because the Crabbers will take over on downs. Just 30 seconds remains in the ballgame. The Crabbers now have one timeout remaining at least. I think they may have two, but in fact I know they have one, but that's not important as the clock is restarted. The Falcons cannot stop the clock and there are but 24 seconds. There you see the Crabbers can literally run it all the way down to no time. They have to, sit to get the ball snapped in 25 seconds, I believe. So the Crabbers, in fact, don't even have to take another snap from center if my statistics prove to be correct. Six seconds, five, four, three, and now a flag comes down. So apparently they had three seconds that would have made the difference. The Crabbers were not in any hurry to take a snap from center. They didn't care whether they got the ball off or not. They took all the time they needed. Now they'll take the snap from center and undoubtedly will just simply protect the football and go away the victor. The Crabbers will improve their record to 12 and 1, and the Falcons will go to 10 and 3 with this loss. The first loss in five games and the first loss at home all season for the Falcons. Crabbers keep a man deep in the backfield, and Hunter takes the snap, goes to one knee. The ball game is over. The Hampton Crabbers have won the ball game 10 to 6 and move to the state finals for the fourth year in a row and look for victory number three in a row. And there you see the happy Crabber and ha happy fans for the Falcons here at Falcon Field. We see the players on the field congratulating each other on a super ball game. This ball game was in doubt from the very, very beginning, neither team having any kind of dominance over the other. And if my cohort, Bob Hintz, is available, he's down on the sidelines. He's going to go out on the field in a moment here and see if he can get some interviews with some of the Hampton Crabbers, uh, both the coaching staff and the players. And
The forest is home to many living things. That's why, if you're careless with fire when you go to the forest, you could burn a lot more than trees. Maybe someone you know, or even love, uses cocaine, and you still haven't told them how badly you feel about it. Well, there's no more time to look the other way. Cocaine and crack are addictive, and they kill. Please, don't be a part of the silent lie that says cocaine's okay. Speak from your heart and help save a life. Cocaine, the big lie. Call 1-800-662-HELP. Again, the Hampton Crabbers advance to the finals. They will, they will play either T.C. Williams or Highland Springs. Whoever won that game played at the same time this afternoon. Uh, Bob Hintz, you got Mike Houston down on the sidelines. Let's go down now to Bob Hintz. Okay, I got Mike. I was asking Mike Houston about that kickoff after they, he scored the, uh, the field goal. Well, what it was... Is we were hoping that if we could get the ball, we could waste more time. And it was kind of a onside kick. But as for, you know, the, the footage was, I slipped a little and I just, you know, slipped and made a bad kick and it went out of bounds. Well, Mike, you've had a some tremendous year and this is a chance to go back to the finals next, yes, next week. And we're looking forward to, to watch you. Good luck to you the rest of the, the year. I'm going to try to get somebody else. Tim, back up to you. Uh, Tim Cole with Bob Hintz. And we're going to go back down now to Bob Hintz and Sherwood Jones. All right, we're down here on the field. I got uh, Sherwood uh, Jones down here with me. Sherwood, tell me about the game. It was a hard fall game, it looked like, and the weather's cold and all. <coughs> well, during uh, practice, the coach told us they did a lot of trapping with the guards. They came out with a different offensive game plan. They started the um, full house right and the full house stuff, and we had to, um, at halftime, we had to go back in and adjust to it. You guys did a good job of adjusting. They took the ball down and scored that first half, but I tell you what, we've talked all year long about the defense fans a little, but you guys don't break. You really play tough out there. Yes, um, they had nothing to be ashamed of. Um, they made it this far. You know, a semifinal game is supposed to be a hard-fought battle. It sure was. Well, you guys did an excellent job, and we're looking forward to having you next week. Okay, thanks a lot. Good luck to you. Uh, yeah, Channel 29, right. I got Bobby Croft over here. My old buddy Bobby Croft. I called him Coach Croft earlier because he used to coach against me. But Bob's assistant principal over, uh, at the Hampton High School. Bob, we'll just let you ramble on a little bit about this game. It's great, wasn't it? It was a great game. I've never seen such a big football team in my life. I walked by that number 75 at halftime, Bobby. He's 6'5", 265 pounds, and there were no fat on that lad at all. I tell you, he was big from up where we were. Oh, they were big. They were well, Bobby, I mentioned on the on the, on the uh, telecast that you saw McLean when he caught that pass. Talk a little bit about that, because you would have had a better uh, view than what we did. Uh, we were right at the 50-yard line, and that pass, uh, quarterback, was he was off balance when he threw the ball, uh, Eric was. And when McLean went up to catch that ball, I thought, oh, my God, his momentum's going to carry him out of bounds. But he caught it, stayed in bounds about 10 inches. It was gorgeous, beautiful, just a picture book play. Well, that's what we had talked about out there. It was a great one. Well, listen, I know you got to be happy with these Hampton Crabbers. And uh, we're looking next week. We'll either go to W.T. Woodson or up to Richmond, depending on who won the other game. But, well, Bob, we appreciate it. And good luck to you all. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Again, uh, if you just joined us, you've missed one heck of a ball game. The Hampton Crabbers in the semifinals for the fourth year in a row. They come up with a big victory here in Warrenton, Virginia, defeating a tough Fauquier High School Falcon team. And back down to Bob now and Andre Davis. Okay, we got Andre Davis here. Andre, tell me about the ball game. What you feel, especially with this weather, this is a lot different than what you've been used to. The weather makes no difference. We came out here. I think everybody did a great job, um, especially the um, defense. The offense did a good job. A very, I think they did a very good job. Um, the backfield, great job on fakes and running the ball. And the defense, again, I say again, the defensive line did a great job today. They really did. Listen, uh, it was really different to look at this, this offense that the, uh, the Falcons used, where they put the two blocking backs up there. That was really weird for you guys to see, and then the unbalanced line also. You guys had to make some adjustments during halftime? Well, um, 
Yeah, we made a few adjustments, but the um, the unbalance wasn't really a factor. Um, we, we played against that a few times before, and we did a great job against it. Well, you guys really did. We look forward to having you next week. All right, thank you. You watch us on 29, partner. <laughs> All right. Okay, I got Danny Mitchell down here, and I got young Danny in his arms, and it's kind of cold down here. Danny, let me tell me what some of the adjustments you guys had to make during uh, during halftime with your defense. Well, we just, you know, maybe just squeezed our tackle down a little bit more, and uh, they'd run some formations that they hadn't run before. I think they jumped their whole offense they'd been running, and, and they showed us some new stuff, and so it was just a matter of adjusting to it. Well, they do a lot of different things. You, when they line up for a kick or a field goal, well, you don't know what they're going to do. That's, and, and that really kind of hurt them because here they had down at the uh, – when they was going for the two-point conversion, uh, had they went ahead and kicked the ball, then they could have got maybe into a field goal uh, situation, which they never did get a chance to. Right. Well, Coach has always said, and he said this week, you, you live by the trick play, you're going to die by it. And I believe that's what happened to him right here on the uh, on the extra point. But then, you know, with this big trick play, they had pretty decent field position. They threw it, and it was a lateral, and, you know, it was second in, in 35 instead of, you know, second in 10. Well, you and I had talked about this earlier in the week. Sometimes they will put their, their first-string quarterback out on a, on a wing and a second-string quarterback through a lateral and he patched it and they did that a lot right, especially right. the second half yeah there towards the end i think a quarterback played more flanker than he did quarterback, <laughs> he really but, uh, did you know we, we had good coverage in the secondary and uh we, we didn't get a lot of heat on him but uh it's hard to you know it's hard to be keep chasing that same man over and over well, and that's true i tell you what you gotta you gotta take your hat off you, your coaches have just done an excellent job all year with preparing these guys for the team and we look forward to, to being either at woodson or at richmond with right, y'all well, okay we told our kids you know we told them it said this was the game to get you to the game this, this was the big one right here, and now next week we go back and take care of business. Well, hopefully. I'll see you during the week, Dan. Okay, Bob, thank you. All right, back up to you, Tim. Okay, again, recapping for you the final score, a hard-fought football game. It came down to who had the best defense. I think the Crabbers were able to come up with the plays when they had to come up with them, and they come away a four-point victor, 10-6, to six, over the Falcons of Fauquier High School. From Warrington, Virginia, this is Tim Cole for Bob Hintz and the entire crew. Great job again, fellas and ladies. We appreciate all your efforts, and again, we remind you, this game will air Monday and Wednesday at 9 p.m. and Thursday morning at 9 a.m., and then you can and also catch the Phoebus game. Their semifinal game will be played Tuesday and Thursday at 9 p.m. here on Channel 29 and Friday morning at 9 a.m. as well. Again, our final score, the Hampton Crabbers 10, the Falkier Falcons 6. Again, thank you for watching and hope to see you next time. We'll have that final game for you next week. Good afternoon, everybody. Channel 29, WHCS-TV. Thank you.